Here's what you need to make your own Ava Bunny stuffy. Some worsted weight yarn in the color of your choice for the body of your bunny, and then an accent color that you can use for the stripes portion of the bunny, a size F or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. This one is Clover More brand, which is my favorite hook brand to work with. A pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a safety nose, this little triangle and it's like velvet, velvety. It's got a little texture to it. So that's my safety nose in the back that goes on it. And then a pair of safety eyes. I get these guys from Hobby Lobby over in the doll making section. And the safety nose is off of Amazon and I will link that in the description below for you guys, as well as all of the other materials you're gonna need. If you do not have access to or want to use the safety eyes and nose, you can embroider your own facial features and there is a tutorial link to that in the blog post that goes with this pattern. Also, I wanted to show you that these bunnies look super cute when made in a solid color. You could add a little heart right there or a, a flower crown or something like that, but this is what they look like in a solid, just one color of yarn, no stripes. And then this will be what it would look like if you used a variegated yarn. So it can have some really fun patterns and prints when you use variegated yarn. I just wanted to show you those two options as well before we got started. One last thing before we start, if you do plan on selling these guys, in your Etsy shops or at markets or on Facebook, something like that, you might want to include a disclaimer that they are made with small pieces. So that would be these. And they shouldn't be left with children under three unsupervised because these things can come out of your make. Um, children are crafty and they are good at doing things that they shouldn't be able to do. Even though these are on really, really good, they can still pop off and that's the perfect thing for choking a child. So just put a disclaimer, children under three should not be left alone with these little guys. You will also need some polyfill to stuff your bunny, some scrap black yarn that is, I mean, just 16 inches of yarn, black yarn, four sewing pins, and a couple stitch markers just in case. To start, we are going to make a magic circle and then single crochet six times into the center of our magic circle. Sorry, I can't see what I'm doing because I'm filming it. Okay. And then chain one to secure right there. I haven't filmed a tutorial in a while and I'm obviously a little nervous. We're going to single crochet six times into the center of our magic circle. So right into the middle that's where we're gonna place our single crochet. That's one, two. You may notice that I yarn under instead of the traditional yarn over when I crochet. This was just how I taught myself, but it actually gives you a twisted look to your single crochet, which can make for tighter work with your amigurumi type patterns. So if you wanted to try this technique out, you're more than welcome, or you can just do the traditional yarning over. Um, it will still work just fine. One more for six. And now we're going to pull this tail over here and close up our circle. That's why it's magic. For round two, we're just gonna go directly into the top of our first stitch over here. We're not going to be chaining and joining while making these bunnies. Everything is worked in the round. So for round two, we're going to increase in each stitch around for a total of 12 stitches in the round, starting in our very first single crochet from round one. So one, two, that is an increase. You just put two stitches in the same space. I'm gonna do that all the way around. That's two. Three times, we're gonna do it six times because we had six stitches. Four. 
five and six. Now we have 12 stitches in the round and we are ready for round three. We're going to increase in the first stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch. That will be our repeat for this row. Increase in the first stitch. So two stitches in the first stitch, two and then a single crochet in the next stitch for three and that is our repeat. We're gonna keep doing that for a total of 18 stitches around. Last time, increase and then single crochet in the next stitch, giving us a total of 18 stitches in the round. Now we're gonna go for round four, increase in the first stitch, then single crochet and single crochet. That will be our repeat. We're gonna repeat that six times, giving us a total of 24 stitches in the row. So we're going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet, single crochet. That's one, repeat that five more times. And then one more time, increase, then single, single. Okay, now we have 24 stitches in the round and rounds five through 13 is just going to be single crocheting one time in each stitch all the way around. I'm going to actually grab a piece of scrap yarn to use as a stitch marker. I like using scrap yarn instead of little stitch markers in when I'm working in the round because it's quicker for me and I will show you how I use them. So I'm going to put my scrap yarn in the very last stitch. So this is my 24th single crochet. And I know that when I get to that stitch marker, I'm done and I can now be going into the next round. So we're gonna do round five. Rounds five through 13, just putting one single crochet in each stitch for a total of 24. And I will do the first couple here on camera with you to show you how I use the scrap yarn as a stitch marker and then I will do the rest off camera because it is literally just this all the way up for 13 rows. And then we tie off and leave a decent size tail for sewing in later, like six inches is good. Okay, I'm almost to my stitch marker which indicates the end of round five. I'm gonna go into the same space that has my stitch marker. That is my new last stitch. So I'm gonna pull up a loop, go into that new last stitch, and pull my yarn through. And now my yarn is gonna tell me when I get to this one at the end of round six. After I get my 13 rounds, I will come back on camera and show you how to count your rows to make sure you have 13 before you cut your yarn. Okay, I just finished my 13 rounds for leg number one. And I'm going to quickly go back and show you how to count these. And you can see where I pulled my stitch marker up after every 24th stitch. But to count the rows, you just simply look at them. Sometimes it's confusing to me when it's in the round like this. So I just go where I'm on like, so this is where my seam would be if it was, if there was a seam. So I'm just gonna look right here and this is where I'm gonna count. It gives me a nice view that doesn't get confusing from the rounds. So we start down here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's how you can count your rows. I'm gonna go ahead and close up this little hole down here with my tapestry needle just so I can get it out of the way and I won't have to fool with it later. And I just like to go under those first six stitches that I put in my magic circle and give it a tug to make sure it's nice and closed and there's no way of this guy popping back out. 
flip it right side out again. Now the pattern says to slip stitch into the next space. So we're gonna go right here and place a slip stitch. Insert our hook, grab our yarn and pull through both. Flip our yarn, tie off. Ta-da! That is leg number one. And you can go ahead and pull out your stitch marker yarn because we'll use that again for leg number two. Leg number two is exactly like leg number one, but we are not going to cut after round 13. I'm gonna do rounds one through 13 over here for leg two, and then I will come back after I finish that and do the next step with you guys here on camera. All right, just finished round 13 of my second leg. I got my first leg and now we're going to join them together and then get started on our body piece, okay? I'm gonna do something a little crazy. So bear with me, this part confuses me. This is what took me so long to create the pattern for you guys. Um, if you wanna hear that story, you can go check out the blog post. I had designed the Ava Bunny almost four and a half years ago at this point and it took me that long to get up the nerve to design the pattern and make it available for everyone and this is why joining the legs so we're just going to take it really slow and we're going to do it together and it's going to be fine we're going to start round 14 which is going to be the first round of our body we're going to start with our leg number two the one that's still connected to our yarn and we're gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around for a total of 24 so far. Just like we've been doing. Oh, sorry, gosh, I'm sorry. Okay, and 24, and then I'm just going to pull up my stitch marker so we know which row, which stitch was my 24th single crochet in row 14. So I'm gonna put a stitch marker right here because that is the first single crochet in row 14, round 14. So I'm just gonna pop this guy right here to mark the first stitch. This guy marks the 24th stitch or the last stitch on this leg. Now I'm gonna insert my hook back into my working yarn loop. Grab your first, your first leg and place a slip stitch in the slip stitch from where you tied off round 13. So remember we put a slip stitch right here which was in this stitch space. Here's the slip stitch. So we're gonna slip stitch into the slip stitch, okay? Yarn over or under, whatever, and slip stitch right in there. Okay, now I'm just gonna move this tail out of the way. Then it says single crochet in the same space where you slip stitched to tie off. So that's gonna be right here, right where we put the first slip stitch when we finished off leg one. We're gonna put a single crochet into that same spot right here. And that's not my working yarn, here we go. This guy's in my way. And single crochet right there for one. Now we're going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around until we have 23 more, giving us 24 around this leg and 24 around this leg. So single crochet, 23 stitches because we already did one, which would be 24. 22 and 23 is gonna go right here in that space. This is my tail. You guys, this tail is giving me fits. I'm just gonna hide it down in that leg so it doesn't confuse you all. Getting ready to put my last single crochet right there. So that's 24 for this leg and 24 for this leg. Now we're going to slip stitch into the same space as your 24th single crochet. So your last single crochet in round 13 of leg two. 
So this indicates the last stitch in round 14. This right here is our last stitch in round 13. So we're gonna put a slip stitch right here. None of these slip stitches count as a single crochet. They are just helping us to shape our bunny and make sure there's not a hole between the two legs. Now our legs are joined and we have 48 single crochets total in round 14, which is the first round of our body. Okay, and we can take a look at it. It's looking pretty good. There's a tiny hole right there, and it looks bigger right now because I'm pulling apart the stitch, but there will be a smidgen of a hole right there, and you can use this annoying tail right here to just one or two stitches to close that up. Now I'm gonna take this out. Turns out I didn't need it. Better safe than sorry. But I am gonna put one over here to end my last, this is my new last stitch in the round, right there. So when I get into this stitch, that will be 48 stitches in the round. We are going to start right here and keep a going. That's one, two, three, four, five. This is round 15. And it's just one stitch in each stitch around. Okay, so this is our slip stitch that we did. That's not where I put a single crochet. This is the actual slip stitch where I put my hook. We do not count the slip stitches as a space. And one more. Take the stitch marker out. That is where my last stitch is gonna go. And then I'm gonna move it up to right here, and eventually I'm gonna switch back to my scrap yarn. I'm just using this for right now while we get going here. And that is round 15. And I'm gonna pull this out so you can see what we got so far. I'll go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay, and then here's what we've got. So this isn't exactly perfect, see that? I mean, those are just the spaces between stitches. You can use this tail with your tapestry needle and it will be closed right up. Okay, round 16. One time in each stitch all the way around for a total of 48 stitches in the row. Round. Forty-six, forty-seven, and now we are at our 48th space. We're gonna insert our hook into the space, grab our yarn like we're getting ready to do a single crochet like normal, but instead of pulling that through, we're going to grab our striped colored yarn, which happens to be the same color as this, which would probably be, get confusing, so I'm gonna switch scrap yarn colors start our 48th single crochet, but we're not going to finish it. We're gonna drop our pink, grab our stripe color, which for me is linen, and finish out the stitch with the linen yarn. Now for round 17, we're going to single crochet one time in each stitch around for a total of 48 stitches in the row with our linen yarn, but in the 48th stitch, we're going to switch back to our pink yarn. Forty-six. 47, 
And this will be our 48th stitch, even though I forgot to pull up my blue scrap yarn like a good crocheter. So we're gonna start our 48, drop our stripe color, and go back to picking up our main body color. I just leave my two colors connected down here. There won't be cutting and sewing and tails. Ain't nobody got time for that. So just pick up your body color again and finish out the 48th single crochet in that round. Give everything a tighten. And now I am going to pull up my scrap yarn stitch marker just so we don't have that issue again when I get back. And we're going to do round 18, which is single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around for a total of 48 stitches in the round, switching back to our stripe color in our 48th single crochet. Okay, coming up 47 and 48, start the single crochet, drop our body color, pick up our stripe color to finish out the stitch. Now for round 19, we're going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around for a total of 48 stitches in the row, round, and switching back to our body color in the 48th stitch. Coming up on my last stitch, start my single crochet, drop my stripe color, pick up my body color. Now for round 20, we're gonna use our body color and do another round of 48 stitches, switching back to our stripes color in the last stitch. Once we get to where we're using our body color only and we're not making stripes anymore, I will do a better job at using my stitch marker yarn, but I can tell exactly where my round ends because the color of yarn changes. So that's the 48th single crochet right there. So don't necessarily need the stitch marker at this particular time. Okay, last space. Start with our pink. Drop our body color, pick up our stripe color, finish out the stitch. Round 21 will be our last stripe color and then we can cut off our linen yarn over here and just use our pink for the rest of the body of our bunny. So we will finish this round, switch back to pink in the 48th single crochet and then we can cut off our linen yarn. Okay, last stitch. Start it with the linen, finish it with the pink, and then we can cut our linen yarn and set it aside for when we need to work on our little ears. For rounds 22 through 31, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch round for a total of 48 stitches in the round, moving up our scrap yarn stitch marker in the 48th stitch of every round so we don't lose our spot. So that's rounds 22 through 31. I'm going to start doing those off camera because it's exactly the same, just one time in each stitch all the way around. And then after I finish round 31, I will come back on camera and get ready for the next step with you guys. I'll be right back. Okay, I just finished rows 22 through 31, and this is what we have so far of our Ava Bunny. Before we start our decrease rows, that will kind of start shaping the top of our bunny head. We're going to do a few things first. So let's flip our bunny inside out. Make sure both of the feet tails have been sewn in. Then we can tie off and sew in the stripe color tails. I'm just going to knot them right there and then cut mine, I think, this will be sufficient. There's no way this will come apart or pop out and I'm just gonna cut them off so they're not so long inside of there 
And I'm going to leave mine like that, but you can absolutely sew them in if you prefer with your tapestry needle. Now I'm going to look at the spot between our two legs and see if it needs sewn up. I mean, it's really, really good, but I'm just going to use this tail and sew that just, just to make it better than good. Yours may not need this extra little step. It's probably optional. Being careful to get in between the fibers and not just going around the stitches. Here we go. Just kind of closing this little bitty hole up just for my own peace of mind. Okay. After you get that sewn up, you can sew in your tail back here so it doesn't end up popping out on you or your customers or your gift recipients if you are gifting this to a loved one. And then you can cut this tail. And now we're going to flip our guy right side out again. And he is ready to be stuffed just a little. We're just going to add some stuffing. That way we can see where the front is going to be. I've noticed on some of my bunnies, let me show you. This bunny's face is a little off center. So center would have been more this way, you can tell. So, but that's why we're going to stuff first, just the legs, because even if you flattened it out like this, it still might move around. So I just stuff the two legs with some polyfill. If you pull apart your polyfill before you stuff it down into your amigurumi, it does some things. I'm not sure. I think it just helps it stuff more evenly. I saw this trick once and I do it every time now and it keeps, keeps your work from getting all kinds of clumpy. So I'm just going to put that down into one leg and then you can just kind of Move things around and shape it as you go. I'm gonna do the other leg. And you want your legs to be even. You don't want one to be stuffed more than the other one. Okay. So that is what we need for our legs. And I know it's a little bit past the legs, but that's okay. Now we can see where the middle of our bunny is going to be once it's all completed. And we won't be doing guessing and getting a crooked face like we did for this, this poor guy. Now the directions say, find the center of your bunny face and stitch on the mouth with a tapestry needle and a scrap piece of black yarn. So I'm gonna take my scrap piece of black yarn and I'm gonna do exactly what I just did with the other bunny to show you how I find the center. This is the only thing that I do and it seems to work for the most part. There's my center. I like to put the bottom tip of my mouth. So that's gonna be this tip right here in round 22. So remember our first stripe was, this was round 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So that's our first body color after our third stripe. So about right smack right here is where we're gonna be going. So I'm just going to stick this sewing pin down right in that spot so I don't lose it. Right here. Okay, that's the bottom tip of our mouth, just like that. And then the top, I like to put in round 25. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 is right there. So let's go back to making sure we keep our guy nice and straight. Okay. 23, 24, 25. So that's gonna be right here. I'm gonna grab another pin. There. 25, just kidding, one more. 
There we go. Okay, so that's where we're gonna be putting our mouth. And then it says, so bottom tip and top tip, and then it, which the top tip is under the nose. And then the two side sides are gonna go into row 23, just slightly above row 22. Let's go ahead and thread on our tapestry needle. Bottom tip is gonna come out first. So, right here for the bottom tip. Okay. And then you can move that guy. He was just a quick little placeholder. Now we're gonna go back into the top where we put our top tip little placeholder right there. Just like that, right into that same spot. Can you see that? Okay, and then we can pull this out. Pull this through. Our mouth is coming right along. Now I'm going to do my little cheeks, which are these two little little triangle doop doop. And those are in row 23, which is this row right here. And I'm gonna go up in this one, right? It's kinda hard to do on camera, come on. Ugh, right there, okay, wait, I had it right there. So I'm gonna come up right through that little stitch and then back down into my bottom tip. And then I'm gonna come back out right here. So they're symmetrical, so it's gonna come back out. So I'm gonna go in this way and then back out right here and then back down into the bottom tip. So in, I'm gonna go ahead and maneuver my pin to come back out for the other cheek. Pull it through gently. Now you don't wanna pull it super tight. No need to get carried away and then back down into our bottom tip to finish our little face here and pull it all the way through. Okay, see, and we got a little smiling bunny face. Now we can adjust if necessary and tie these two together in here. Get that stuffing out of the way. Tie these two together. And then cut our yarn. And then our mouth is on there. Next, it is time for our little nose. Now attach your bunny nose between rounds 25 and 26, right on top of the mouth. Put our nose in between rows 25 and 26. This is 25, this is 26, because remember we did our tippy, the top of our nose in 25, but let's just double check. 21, 22, 23, 24. Well, I put the tip of my nose kind of up a little bit, so this would have been 25. So my nose is gonna go right in where the top of it is because that was supposed to be down a little bit. So this is in between rows 25 and 26. And you just shove it in between the stitches and then line up the little point, the little triangle point down to where the mouth is coming out at. And then we take the back of our little bunny nose and it goes over the nose just like this and you can just push those together until you hear the snaps. Let's see. It's not very loud, the eye snaps are louder. But it should give you two little, you should feel two little snaps. And then our nose is on there. Now it says to position the eyes centered above the nose and between rounds 27 and 28. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. So that's these two rows right here. And we're going to put an eye right here. Nope, I'm gonna go over one more, right there. And then it says to th there's three spaces in between the eyes, so one, two, three. And then right here is where I'm gonna put my second one. Let's see what we got. 
Pretty cute. Pretty cute little bunny face. Now we can snap on the backs of our eyeballs. They go again like this. This little side will be on the back side. You'll hear a couple snaps with the eyeballs. There we go. And this one. Okay. There. Now our little bunny face is on there. Now we can start our decrease rows for our little bunny. Insert your hook back into the loop you left and begin round 32. So for 32, we are going to single crochet six and then decrease. So we're gonna start by single crocheting six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're going to decrease over the next two stitches, and we're going to use the invisible decrease, which is my favorite method for decreasing stitches with amigurumi. To do that, you're going to go under the front loop of the first stitch, just the front loop, and then you're going to take your crochet hook and kind of pivot down and go under the front loop of the second stitch. So you've got two front loops on your hook and your working yarn, and then you're just gonna place your single crochet right there. And essentially you are taking two stitches and turning it into one. Then we're going to repeat that same little section five more times for a total of six repeats, giving us a total of 42 stitches in the round. And we are gonna end with a decrease round over here. So let's start back again with six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have an invisible decrease. That's two. Again with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Decrease. That's three. Six, and then we're going to end with a decrease over these last two stitches. And pull up our stitch marker. That was round 32. Now for round 33, we're going to single crochet five and then a decrease. And that's going to be our repeat that we do all the way around six times for a total of 36 stitches in the row. So we're going to single crochet one, two, three, four, five, and then a decrease. Repeat that five more times. Five and then a decrease. Pull up our stitch marker and get ready for round 34. For round 34, we're going to single crochet four and then put our decrease, so that will be our repeat. Repeat that for a total of six times, giving us 30 stitches in the round. So we're gonna start over here. It kinda looks like a weird start. We're gonna start right here. And single crochet four. One, two, three, four, and then a decrease. Keep repeating that for a total of six times. Okay, we're gonna decrease over these last two stitches, and that is our last stitch in round 34. 
pull up my stitch marker. I'm just gonna take a look at our guy real quick. You can see his little head starting to shape. After we do the next round, we can start doing a little bit more stuffing, and then we'll stuff and round, stuff and round, stuff and round until he's completely closed up. It's looking really cute. I'm loving this rosy cheeks pink. For round 35, we are going to single crochet in the first three stitches and then decrease. One, two, three, and then decrease. Repeat that five more times for a total of six repeats, giving us a total of 24 stitches in the row. Decrease, three, and decrease over the last two. Pull up our stitch marker. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more polyfill in this guy before I do round 36. If you do plan on selling these, something else that's really sweet that you can do that I used to do when I sold these back in 2016 is crochet a little small heart and put it inside with your stuffing and then that way you can tell all of your customers that each of your Ava bunnies are stuffed with a sweet little heart of its own. And it also comes with, this pattern comes with a PDF download of a birth certificate for this guy. And I'll pop up a picture on the screen here for you guys. Um, if you wanna grab this freebie to go with your Ava Bunny, you can sign up to my email list through the link in the description and it will be sent to you automatically. These are really cute for selling your Ava Bunnies. It gives them a little bit more of a story, makes it a little bit more fun for the kids and parents who purchase them, especially if it's at a market in person. They get to like pick out which bunny they want and then fill out their birth certificate or the adoption certificate and it can be really fun. Let's do round 36 and then we'll do some more stuffing. He is almost done and he's so cute. Okay, back with our hook here. For round 36, we're going to single crochet two and then decrease. One, two, and then a decrease. Just like that. Repeat that five more times for a total of six repeats, giving us a total of 18 stitches in the row. We have one more to finish out the round. One, two, and then decrease. Okay. I am going to actually switch to this stitch marker now, just because it's getting a little hard pulling this guy in and out and we can go ahead and pull it out of there. Okay. Give it some smooching. Looking really good. We have two more rounds and then we can sew up the very tippy top of our bunny. I'm gonna throw in a little bit more stuffing. Okay. Sometimes you just have to move it all around. Okay. Whack the hokey pokey. Okay, let's do round 37, which is just single crochet, decrease. Single crochet, decrease. Around six times, giving us a total of 12 stitches in the row. Decrease. Single crochet, decrease. Okay, and one more decrease. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and set it down. Lord have mercy. Okay. Now for our last round, which is round 37, it says just to decrease, 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 decrease six times 
giving you a total of six stitches in the row. But sometimes when I do that, you see that little tippy? See that? That drives me crazy. So I'm just gonna do it five times and then close the rest of the way up with my tapestry needle. So for our last round, I'm just going to decrease five times and then cut my yarn and sew in, sew close to my circle. Okay, there we go. One, two, four, and then five. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch down here. And tie off my yarn, making sure I leave it a tail long enough for sewing closed my little circle up here. Okay, and to sew this closed, I will be using my tapestry needle. Look how cute. And then to do the closing over here, I just pick up the front loop of every stitch, kind of like the decreases. I think this is called something too, but I can't remember. Magic bind off maybe. But I just go under the front loops and then pull tight. And I'm just gonna push it on through. There we go, and that kind of gets rid of the little weird tippy that my other bunny has. And our top is completely closed, and I'm just going to continue sewing in this tail here so that it is nice and secure. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go down into my bunny body and then pop back out just anywhere and clip off my yarn. Okay, our little bunny is ready for some ears. Still has a little bit of a tippy, you guys. Amigurumi is not my area of expertise. Let's set him to the side and grab our pink yarn and our linen yarn. We are going to make our striped ear first because ta-da, I already made the solid ear. So this is what we're going for. And we are going to do the striped one first, and then we will sew them onto, oh my gosh, our little bunnies. We are going to start with a magic circle, just like we did when we started our bunny feet. Okay, insert our hook, pull up a loop, and chain to secure. Now we are going to single crochet seven into the center of our magic circle. So on the feet we did six, but for the ears we're doing seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you can pull it closed because it's magic. Now still working in the round, just like the rest of the bunny, we're going to put an increase in each of those seven stitches giving us a total of 14 stitches in the round. We're gonna go right directly into the top of that first stitch for our increase, which is two single crochets in the same spot. Sorry. And repeat that for every stitch until we have 14 single crochets in the row. Okay, for round three, we are going to increase in the first stitch, and then single crochet over here in the next stitch. That will be our repeat. We're gonna do that all the way around, giving us a total of 21 stitches in the round. So increase, one, two, single crochet, one. All the way around, one, two for an increase, one, that's two. We are repeating everything seven times this time instead of six. That was five. This is six and one more will be seven. Increase and single crochet. 
Okay, we now have 21 stitches and we've finished round three. For rounds four and five, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch around. So I'm going to just count to 21 so I don't have to use the stitch marker. 21, and that was round four. And then we're gonna do the same thing for round five. So I'm just gonna count to 21 again. And that will be finishing up round five. 20, okay, and for our 21st, which is the last stitch in the round, we are going to insert our hook, pull up a loop like we're getting ready to place our single crochet, drop our pink, and pick up our linen. Finish out with our linen for our color change, and now round six, we're going to single crochet one time in each stitch around for a total of, again, 21 stitches. Twenty and twenty-one, drop our linen, pick up our pink, and finish out the stitch. Okay, before we do round seven, I'm gonna go ahead and sew in our first tail that we did down here. Okay, and after I sew in that tail, we can get ready for round seven. Round seven is going to start with a decrease over the first two stitches. So we're gonna go under this first stitch, loop, front loop, under that second stitch, front loop, and place our single crochet there, giving us a single crochet decrease. There we go. And then we're going to single crochet nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we're gonna decrease over the next two stitches. Just like that. And then single crochet eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, and you guessed it. In the last one, we're gonna switch back to our stripe color. That's eight. Now for round eight, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around, giving us a total of 19 stitches in the round with our stripe color. And in the last single crochet, the 19th single crochet, we will switch back to our pink and get ready for round nine. Okay. Just like that. Going to decrease over the first two stitches. And then single crochet eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Decrease over the next two. And then single crochet seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. In the last single crochet, we're going to switch back to our stripe color for one more round, round 10. We're gonna use our stripe color and single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around, giving us a total of 17 stitches in the round. 16 and 17, we're gonna drop our linen, pick up our pink. And now this is our last stripe, so we can cut our linen yarn and sew in our tails. I'm just gonna do that after round 11. Okay, I'm going to pull up a big loop so I can tie these two tails together inside my ear. Okay, you can flip your ear inside out to tie your two tails together. And snip off the extra. Now for round 11, we're gonna start with a decrease over the first two stitches. Decrease and then single crochet 
seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then a decrease, and then single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That gives us 15 stitches in the round. And for round 12, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around for a total of 15 stitches in the round. And 15 now for round 13. We're going to decrease over the first two stitches. Single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Decrease over the next two stitches. Then single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five, giving us 13 stitches in the round. And round 14, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around. 12 and 13. Just a few more rounds to go. Round 15, we are going to start with a decrease over the first two. Then single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five. Decrease over the next two. Then single crochet four, giving us 11 stitches in the row. Three, four. Now for round 16, 17, and 18, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch for a total of 11 stitches in each round. To make it a little bit faster, I'm just going to single crochet 33 because 11 times three is 33 and 16, 17, 18 is three rows. So I'm gonna do the next three rows just all at once and count to 33 instead of counting to 11 three times. 30, 31, 32, and 33. Then I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch and cut my yarn, leaving a very long tail for sewing our ears onto our bunny. Okay, then we finished our little bunny ears. And now it is time to attach these cuties onto our poor earless bunny over here. Okay. To do this, I like to use my sewing pins. Again, these are my secret weapon for Amigurumi, even though we still get little head tippies. If you have a, if you have a tip for getting rid of these, let, let me know in the comments because I would like to not have those on my Amigurumi's so now I'm gonna use my four pins and we're just gonna line up our ears where they should start and finish. And then put pins on there to save the spots. I just kind of eyeball it and then stick a pin in right there for the top and right here-ish for the bottom. And then I make it symmetrical. So you can see those are not straight. I will fix it. This is what I do. And then I just keep going back and forth and put the ears in the spots. I think these are gonna be too close to the eyes. Normally I like to put them pretty in line with the side of the body. So that's how I mark for my ears. Now we can attach our ears in between the, the pins. So I'm gonna start with this side. Let's start with this side. Okay, so used to, I would adjust this like so. So my, my tail was over here on the side and I could start just attaching it straight from the side. This makes them 
sit funny on the head. So just lay, let them lay flat the way they want to lay and then make the adjustments as necessary down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread my tapestry needle. I am almost out of recording time for my iPad, so I'm hoping I can get this done before I run out of time. I might just do one ear for you guys, but they're exactly the same. So I'm going to go, this guy's gonna go right here in between those two pins, just like that. So I'm going to start by putting my yarn needle under into the body and out the front like this. And then it's gonna go back into the ear, pulling it down. Okay, and then I'm just gonna line up my ear. So then I'm gonna go right through the very front corner right there, just like that. And pull it all the way through. And then as I pull it, that's going to make it kind of squeeze up next to my bunny body. Now I'm gonna go back into the body of the bunny, just like this. Pull that through. And then back into the bunny ear again. Give that a nice tug. Right here into our body ear, okay. Just like that. Normally I put this guy between my knees and hold him still with my knees and this is much faster of a method. But the main thing is just keep pointing this down to this pin. So every time you, you go through, you might just line it up to the bottom pin and then go through again and then it will be straight. Line up the pin, okay, good to go. It's much easier off camera. Man, I keep complaining in this video. I apologize. Please excuse my crazy leggings, my poor audio, and my bad lighting. I just really wanted to show you this leg method because it's way better than what I was doing before. And I feel like if I didn't show you what I was talking about, you wouldn't be able to picture it. So this is what I do. It's slightly different than this when I'm not filming, but this is basically it. And it's a lot faster, but also easier to get it straight when you do it this way. Okay, back to better quality videos. Okay, line it up, looking good. I'm resisting the urge of putting my feet up on this table and using my legs to support my bunny. I'm not gonna do that because that would be weird. Okay. Then back into our ear after we make sure it's lining up correctly with our bottom pin down here. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep doing that until my ear is completely attached. I don't even think I could make my body put my legs on this table without being in excruciating pain. Okay. Line up our end to our ear. Okay, almost done guys, almost done. Last one maybe. I'm gonna go ahead and move my ear pin down a little, still in the same line, just down so I can see what I'm doing, but still keep it lining up. Let's go, let's make one more into the ear. Okay, now our first ear is attached and our bunny can hear us now. Okay, so I'm gonna take these two pins out, get them out of my way, those two are done. Now you can go back 
back up the other side to make sure it's extra secure because little kids might be getting these and pulling on them and tugging on them. So I'm just gonna go back the way we just did, into the body, back to the ear, into the body, back through the ear, until I get to this side, and then when I come back, we will tie off together. But I'm gonna put this between my knees because it's faster and easier and more efficient. I'll be right back. Okie dokie, I finished going back up this way and sewing my ear on so it's extra, extra secure. And now I'm going to tie off down here. I'm just gonna go into the body of my bunny down here and pick up a little bit of one of the stitches. And I'm going to hold up a loop over here. I'm just gonna knot it and this is how, this is how I do that. So I make my little, and then I'll go right back through. And then that's knotted. And one more time just to be extra sure. Okay, and now I can sew in my tail. I'm going to do the other ear off camera for the sake of time, but I will come back and show you the completed bunny as soon as he is done. And here he is in his completed state, our Ava bunny. Isn't he cute? He is made with rosy cheeks, body color, and linen stripes color and this is i love this yarn from hobby lobby i hope you guys like this pattern and found it pretty easy to do it's a pretty simple amigurumi style pattern if you have any tips for how to join these two little legs or how to close up the top and not get a little tippy please leave a comment and let me know. I am always learning and trying to perfect my craft. Also, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I am happy to always answer your questions in any way that I can. Instagram is probably the fastest way to get a hold of me, um, but I try to respond here in the comments as well. Don't forget to grab your freebie if you plan on selling these cuties. The little birth certificate or adoption certificate that I mentioned earlier is a, always a crowd pleaser at markets. and you Or you could do like birthday parties or anything. It's really cute. I am going to go sew on some ears to this poor guy and then call it a night. 